offer online. And I love that reading from you, Christopher, on Yogananda, because this morning I am speaking on a tribute to Alma. Alma has been my primary spiritual teacher for, gosh, uh, 31 years. But my first teacher was Michael Singer, uh, who I met in Florida when I was 15. And um, Michael Singer's teacher was Yogananda. So I feel such a part of that lineage, very connected to that lineage as well. But this morning, I, I wanted to speak on Alma because I just spent two days down in Oakland uh, in a retreat with her um, on Tuesday and Wednesday. And it was so, so deeply nourishing for my heart and my soul that I really wanted to share that energy uh, with you today. So I'd like to begin with another reading. And this these are words from Alma. These are words that uh, you find on her website, alma.org. Alma says, may the tree of our lives be rooted in the soil of love. May good deeds be the leaves, kind words be the flowers, and peace be the fruit. May the world flourish as one family united in love. May we thus be able to create a world in which peace and contentment prevail. This is Amma's sincere prayer. So, you know, Amma never fails to open my heart more deeply and purify my mind, um, even after 31 years with her. Um, and I, I really feel it is an immeasurable blessing to have a living master spiritual teacher. Um, you know, and I know that she is a spiritual teacher as well for many of you. She has been a master teacher to me, um, but she's also been a divine mother to me. <laughs> oh, and that, that mother energy was so tender in this meeting, in this hug that I, I just had with her on Wednesday night. And I think because she knew that I had lost my earthly mother. So I especially was so touched by her really, you know, being the divine mother in my life so, so, so important and so supportive for me. I would say, you know, trying to speak on Alma is like, you know, trying to put the sky into a bottle. But um, the things that I've learned from Alma, the most important things, have been what unconditional love looks like and what selfless service looks like. When you watch Alma, you get all the teaching you need, really. Um, she hugs people every single day uh, for at least 12 hours a day. She doesn't take a day off, and she's done this about 39 years. And everyone gets the same spiritual energy and love. You know, she holds each, each person so close and, and right, presses them right into her heart. And, you know, they often cry, and she wipes their tears. And her hugs are not ordinary hugs. If you've had her hugs, you know what I mean. Um, you know, aside from the incredible comfort, you know, of her embrace, she's chanting while she's hugging you a mantra in your ear. It's usually ma, 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 um, meaning divine love. And just awakening that divine um, mother essence in, in your own being, in our own being. And she's transmitting a powerful spiritual energy um, for your awakening. You know, I, I received my first hug this last Wednesday. I hadn't had a hug from her in years because when I'm with her, I'm, I'm always singing for her usually. And I feel like that's such an incredible blessing in Darshan. I, don't, I, I almost feel like it'd be selfish to also go up and want a hug. But this time I didn't sing for her, but I went up and, and I received her hug. And as soon as she held me, well, as soon as she looked at me and she gave me that recognition, that smile, and held me for that extra long time, I just, tears started flowing. And as I like left her embrace, I, I just, I felt so much energy in my heart. I mean, I felt like a thousand volt, volts of light were blasted open in my heart and I had to literally hold my heart. <laughs> I, I held it for probably 30 minutes. I could not take my hand off my heart because there was so much energy in my heart and there was all these tears. I felt like everything that was unmet in my heart got met 
and 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 so there was this tremendous release and you know it was especially moving when she gave me an apple because normally she gives you an apple for your birthday that's the only time you get an apple <laughs> But, uh, you know, it just was really a, an incredibly powerful darshan with her. And I just felt open back up. I, I think sometimes we don't even realize that we're closed down or we don't realize how much is in our hearts that needs releasing until we have like a huge release. And then we go, wow, look, look at all I was carrying, you know. So... You know, people come to Alma for different reasons. They come for, for solace, for, for comfort, but they also come for, for learning. And I think that certain souls at a certain level realize, you know, what, a, what an incredible blessing and gift it is to have someone like her available. You know, she's revered by the Dalai Lama, by the Pope, um, by the President of India, comes to her for advice. Um, you know, by the United Nations, you know, her ministry is just so vast. When I think of Jesus just having those 12 disciples, right? Um, Alma, her ministry is just, it's kind of unfathomable. It's, it's millions of people. Um, and, and her charitable work is really, it's, it's phenomenal. She has schools, free schools for all ages, all over the world. She's got hospitals, free hospitals with state-of-the-art health care, orphanages, vocational training for the poor. Um, she has rehabilitation for sex workers. I did a, I did a, a concert um, a while back to raise money for, for that um, rehabilitation center. So the scope of her work, her blessing, um, it, it, it's pretty amazing. And what's most amazing is that we can have this personal relationship with her. We can go to her and, and have a personal hug. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty special. One of the things that I noticed this time seeing her was she really fortifies my faith. You know, I'm a minister uh, and I'm, I'm always, you know, I always have my attention on you know, spiritual scripture, on meditation, on spiritual practice. But I am human, just like everyone else, and I can feel my faith waning at times by the incredible challenges that our world is facing. Um, and so I really, you know, I really find being in her presence and all the practices we do in her presence it so restores my faith. It restores my soul. It really sets me back on course knowing why I'm here and, and having energy for really giving my life to, to waking up and living more wakefully and living a life of service and, and remembrance of the, the deepest truth. You know, sometimes, <clears throat> gosh, you know, the news from yesterday, right? It, it really can feel like we are in the Kali Yuga, right? The Kali Yuga, the dark age of materialism, is a period that in Hinduism they talk about where selfishness reigns and the ego, egoistic behavior is more prevailing. So, you know, during this period, we, we need inspiration to help us believe in goodness you know, uh, to believe there's a divine reality we can move towards where our suffering and all suffering can be transformed into peace. Yeah, yeah. So I am just so happy to come to come back to you all, you know, and, and share um, <clears throat> this renewed faith. You know, it's, it took a little toll on my body, as it often does driving 800 miles, but but I really do feel um, incredibly renewed inside. Um, I feel like this world has a lot of noise and there's a million distractions. And with Alma, every moment you're in her presence, you're focused. You're focused on some kind of spiritual practice. And what I, what I see it happen to me and also to all those people is the cynicism dissolves and the pessimism dissolves and the stillness comes and this purification comes of the mind and of the heart um yeah and then she also she's got a great sense of humor and she just has a lot of joy and bliss and um there's a story uh that she shares she shares so many funny teachings she loves to tell humorous stories so i wanted to share um one 
that I really love about about you know the state of egoism and cynicism in the world and the importance of empowering the divine feminine in all beings and men as much as women so the story goes <clears throat> there once was a woman who lived in a village who found immense happiness in doing selfless service as service to God and the religious leaders of the village chose her as one of their priests so she was first she was the first appointed woman priest in the area and the male priest didn't like it one bit but her great compassion and her humility and her wisdom um, were appreciated by the villagers so it caused a lot of jealousy uh, among the male priest well one day all the priests were invited to a religious gathering on an island and it took about three hours to reach the island by boat and so as the priests priest all boarded the boat, they discovered to their dismay that the woman priest was already seated in the boat. And so they muttered among themselves, what a pain. She refuses to leave us alone. And so the boat set off. And about an hour later, the engine suddenly died and the boat came to a standstill. And the captain said, oh no, we're stuck. We forgot to fill the tank. Nobody knew what to do. So there was no other boat in sight. And at this point, the woman priest stood up and she said, don't worry, brothers, I'll go and fetch some more fuel. And having said this, she steps out of the boat and she walked away across the water. And the priest watched with great astonishment, but were quick to remark, look at her. She doesn't even know how to swim. <laughs> Ah, uh, so at the time Mama told that story, she was speaking about how our world needs to wake up to the ways of the divine feminine, you know, that are so suppressed in our world, in both men and women. You know, and we, we, we see it in how our Mother Earth is treated, right? We see it in, in the habits of self-interest and, and greed. We so much need the energies of compassion um, and, and this desire to put love into action, to be love, you know, to really, like Alice saying, give ourselves to love in earnest every day, you know, to re-choose that, right? You know, for me, when, when, I, when I feel the Divine Mother energy awake in myself, I see with the eyes of love. I see, um, I see us all as one family, and I feel a tenderness for everyone and all that we go through, you know, and there's no judgment. There's just this desire to uplift and to help and to help us all become free, more free of suffering. One thing I love about Amma's presence is she sings. I knew when I first heard her sing, okay, she's my teacher because singing is a big part of, of the practice, the spiritual practice around her. But her, her songs are profound. And I love that now they have the technology down so they show the words of what she's singing. It's usually in Sanskrit or Malayalam but they have it in English on the screen. And the message is so often about how we are searching in vain for fulfillment in this temporary world, you know, and that there is a greater goal. There is a su supreme state for us to know that we can rest in, you know, that is blissful, that is peace, and that is free from bondage and limitation. One of the songs uh, goes, victory to mother who is full of kindness. Oh, mother, please give me the bliss of your ocean-like compassion. You have been born the goddess of wisdom to rid us of this sorrowful world. May your holy feet transmit their brilliance into our hearts forever. You teach us to discriminate between the self and the non-self the self and the non-self. Hmm. You know, I, I feel like in this world, there's not a lot of interest in the general public, you know, in this, this discrimination between the self and the non-self. Um, there's, you know, there's humanity pretty lost in, you know, getting their desires fulfilled, pretty lost in their iPhones and lost in the news and lost in this world of polarity. Um, and there isn't, perhaps enough focus uh, on, on the deeper meaning of this one precious life that we have to live. Um, Ramana Maharshi, another one of India's great saints, once said that 
you've already received so much grace if you know there's a greater awakening to discover about yourself. And then you're even more blessed if you find a teacher and or teachings that help you grow spiritually. And then you are the rarest and most blessed if you live those teachings implicitly and wake up walking upon this earth completely free in a state of self-realization. Mm. So I met Ama back in 1993. <clears throat> I had um, had two, two years before that, I'd had this awakening that, that was so dramatically changed my life. I was living at Brighton Bush Hot Springs and leading meditation and chanting and giving concerts and um, soaking in those hot springs and everything I felt like inspired to to really um, wake something up in me and um, I had this experience one night of just merging in the self in this infinite infinite vastness stillness like I'd never known with no thoughts not a single thought and just this sense of being infinite beingness itself for about eight hours and um, it changed my life. It changed me to the core. And I think that after that is when I really became really in earnest on my path. And for about a year, I lived in, in a lot of silence, a lot of bliss, moved to Mount Shasta, got a cabin in the woods. But then I was guided after about a year to find the greatest living master I could find. And I went to Mother Mira. I met Mother Mira and spent some time with her, but I felt like she sent me to Alma. And so I met Alma who I feel like I've been with many lifetimes. Uh, she's been my teacher, I feel. You know, and there's many others, many of you actually have found Alma as, as their, their primary spiritual teacher. Something that you learn after many years with her uh, or with any spiritual master is that in their presence, you can experience profound purification in even a really short amount of time. You know, knowing I had two days and I don't know if I'll see her again or when I'll see her again, you know, I went down there just so uh, focused on receiving as much as I could every moment of being with her. You know, everything there purifies the mind and heart. There's chanting or there's a Dharma talk or there's meditation or there's darshan. So if you go in and you sit down and you chant with all your heart and you pray with all your heart and you, you, share your, you speak your mantra and you really listen to what she's saying, you know, it, it's incredibly purifying. Um, so before I close, I want to share uh, one story about a time when I was with Alma in India. It was a really important lesson that I learned from her. It wasn't an easy lesson, uh, but it was one that sure has stayed with me. And it was really about, it was really, I think, her showing me how serious are you about this path of awakening. So it was back around 1999. I was in India, and I was touring with Alma in South India. And we were all in this big city of Trivandrum in Kerala. And we spent a week there, and Alma was hugging about 25,000 people a day. It was unbelievable how fast, you know, they were bringing people into her and moving people away from her. And the living situation was very austere. I was in a room with about 200 women. We're all on these little thin mats on the floor, very uncomfortable. And it was very dusty. It was very hot. The bathrooms were far away. There were these, these stalls outside with just a hole in the floor. And um, it, it was, I had no place for privacy, not a moment of privacy for a week. So. Um, Amma had me singing every day uh, on stage while she would give darshan, and that, of course, was a very special spiritual practice, very purifying. But at the end of the week, when everyone was getting on the buses to go back to the ashram, I had this thought, you know, there's a beach nearby. It was about 30 minutes away, Kovalam, and I could go there. I could take a taxi and spend the night and spend half the day and just have some quiet, some peace, and some real rest. So I took a taxi and I went. Well, the next day, everyone else was back at the ashram. It was about two hours away. And at the ashram, Amma called for me to sing. She would often do that. And it was a special darshan she was giving for the people from the West, the English-speaking people. And that's she, when she especially liked me to sing because the words were in English and everyone would cry and it would help them open their hearts. So she sent people everywhere looking for me and no one could find me because I wasn't there. 
But when I got back the next day, everyone came up to me and said, Alma was looking for you. She was calling for you everywhere. She was asking, you know, for you to do the one thing that you can do to, to really, truly serve. And I felt, I felt so bad, you know, I went up to Alma for Darshan and, um, she said a whole bunch of words in Malayalam, you know, I don't speak Malayalam, but I knew exactly what she was saying. It was pretty stern, <laughs> the tone. And I, I was just, I had a good cry, you know, I hardly slept that night. And then the next, the next day I was there, I was ready to sing before she even came in the temple. I was sitting there with my keyboard as soon as she came in. And I think I sang for about two hours. And then I went up to her for Darshan and I said, please forgive me, you know, and I, I was just crying and she just smiled and pinched my cheek and she just showered me with love and affection. But I have thought of the teaching that I receive from that so often, you know, because for me it was, it was her showing me, you know, if you want to come to India, if you want to come to Alma for spiritual awakening, give everything to that. And let, see if you can let go of the attachments to, you know, having your own private room and your own quiet space and your own peace and quiet and be willing to sacrifice a little. It's, it's called tapas. Tapas means fire, you know, spiritual sacrifice. Be willing to be uncomfortable sometimes if it is for a higher goal and also for the benefit of others. You know, and I'm all for living in balance and taking care of my health, but I have learned from her you know, to put myself aside um, since then much more. And if I can, spend my time being a benefit to others more, right? She does this every day. So for me to do it on occasion is, is not so much to ask. So Amma's always pointing to the greater reality of who we are as not separate from God, not separate from love. You know, she points us to know the ultimate truth which is our own immortal beingness. You know, sages give lifetimes to this goal, right? It takes a deep desire to really want to know this. It can't be a, a passing fancy or something we just give one hour to on Sunday. You know, and it can be hard to maintain this kind of focus in this world with a million distractions. That's why we need tune-ups. That's why we need retreats. We'll have another retreat this fall. But that's why I'm here with you. That's why I was guided to create, co-create with all of you this community, Unity Community. And I believe that's why you're here. You know, something in your heart knows the value of ultimate truth, of unconditional love. Our world needs compassion and us living the most meaningful, purposeful life more than ever. So in our willingness to give our attention to purifying our minds and hearts and in serving humanity, we become more beautiful. And the Divine Mother shines in us. We're not separate from her. We're not separate from that energy ever. One last thing I want to share about Alma is she never rests. She never sleeps. <laughs> you know, seeing her this week, she had a neck brace on because, you know, thousands of people hug her and they pull on her neck and, you know, she's leaning over and her neck's always strained. But you cannot get her to take a break. You cannot get her to take a day off. She won't do it. And her disciples, her inner circle has been trying to get her to rest for a long time. But this is what she says. I love these words. I love this quote from her. She says, just as a stick of incense spreads its fragrance as it burns itself out, Amma wants to give herself to others. Her only wish is that her hand should always be on someone's shoulder, caressing and consoling them and wiping their tears. Amma's whole life is an offering to the world. And so I pray for us to be inspired by that, to be inspired by that and to be uplifted and, 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 and growing our faith that our whole life, our whole life can be an offering to the world, you know, and that we do that when we give our spiritual life our full attention, you know, that we might know the immensity of love that is our true nature, that we might give ourselves to love. So um, I want to close with that same prayer that we speak around Alma. May all beings in this world be at peace. Would you repeat that with me? Join me in saying that five times. May all beings in this world be at peace. May all beings in this world be at peace. May all beings in this world be at peace. May all beings in this world be at peace. 
May all beings in this world be at peace. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om peace, peace, peace. I send you my love and I bring Alma's love and blessings to you all. Thank you so much.